Let's say you're supplying goods to a small entity, let's say the Commonwealth, and the Commonwealth, being a fairly reasonable entity, wants to own the IP in any material that's created under that contract. What do you do? Interesting. G'day everyone, Simon here from The Contract Company. Contracts, it's what we do all day, every day, and sometimes overnight. Lucky us, and it is. Lucky us. Righto, so you have won a contract to supply goods, well done, to the Commonwealth. But the Commonwealth being the Commonwealth, they want to own any IP in contract material. And I put that in quotes because that's often the defined term in Commonwealth contracts. They basically say that any contract material that arises during the term of the contract is owned by the Commonwealth. Look, I don't know why they always want to own the IP. They don't have to, but that just seems to be how they roll. So we had this scenario recently where we had an Australian entity that had won a job to supply goods, which I won't talk about, to the Commonwealth. So their question to me was, in that contract between them and the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth wanted to own all the IP that arose or that came into existence during the course of the contract. Was that a problem, Simon, they asked me. So then they explained that back to me, Australian entity had won the contract with the Commonwealth. They had an assembler in the US, the supplier, the main US supplier, but sitting behind that, they had five or six other part components manufacturers. So those four or five different component manufacturers send it to the main US um, supplier, sorry, the main US manufacturer or assembler. They assemble the goods, get them shipped to Australia. The Australian entity then supplies the goods to the Commonwealth. So do they have an issue to worry about with IP? And so ended up being able to say to them, no, you don't. Because two issues, you can try and negotiate with the Commonwealth in terms of getting the IP clause changed. That's always the best thing to do. I just know from dealing with some of these agencies, not terribly easy to do that. Um, so look for option B. And option B here is actually understanding the factual scenario of what's happening. So then in this scenario here, the Australian entity is the contracted party to the contract. So the contract's between two players, the Australian company and the Commonwealth. It's not between these other US suppliers. So then the question is, in this contract between those two entities, is the Australian company creating any IP in supplying those goods? They weren't. No issue. I know. Pretty clever. <laughs> Joking. Um, but seriously, the point of the whole scenario is that it's easy to get wrapped up in the whole supply chain and you get confused by what's going on, because I've been that down that road in the past myself, and then trying to work out, well, then how does that affect things vis-a-vis -vis the Commonwealth wanting to own the IP? So you've got to go back to basic contract law principles, look at the relationship between the two contracting entities, in this case, the Australian company and the Commonwealth, and what is the obligation between this Australian company and the Commonwealth? Will the Australian company, as defined under the contract, be creating new IP in, in providing the goods? And the answer is no, they won't. So in this case, off the hook. But as I said, the best thing often to do is to try and negotiate, if you can, a better contractual position with the Commonwealth, but not always easy. Anyway, I hope that helps. If you have any questions about that or other issues about contracts, please feel free to get in touch. Simon at contractcompany.com.au or please feel free to share this with anyone you think could find the information useful. Hope that helps. See ya.